Hello there, my name's Stephen Collins. I'm the illustrator of the Dinosaur Awards, which is a book of dinosaur facts written by Barbara Taylor, but with a bit of a difference. All the dinosaurs are winning awards, things like the Colossal Claws Award, the Four Winged Flight Award, and the Dinosaur Killer Award. And what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to read you a page from the book and I'm also going to show you how to draw one of my favourite dinosaurs, the Dromaeosaurus. This is in here. It's a very colourful dinosaur, but really quite fearsome. And so what we're going to do is, if you've got some colour pencils ready to hand and a nice piece of paper, first of all we'll read about Dromaeosaurus and then we're going to learn how to draw him. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so first we're going to have a quick look at the Dinosaur Awards by Barbara Taylor, illustrated by me. Every page has different dinosaurs with different dinosaur facts in it and little comic strips and lots of interesting information all about the different dinosaurs with lots and lots of illustrations. Tyrannosaurus Rex, he's winning, winning the King of the Dinosaurs Award, of course he is. That's pretty much what his name means. Comsognathus is winning the Tiny Dino Award. He could run really fast. And the Dragon Shield Awards, that's for dinosaurs that have really good shields on their backs. And loads of others. I had great fun drawing this. Suchomimus, that's one of my favourite illustrations in there. Uh, an absolutely terrifying dinosaur that lived in the water. You would not have wanted to go swimming with Suchomimus. And the one we're going to learn how to draw today is Dromaeosaurus. Now I'll read you the page first so that we can learn about it. Dromaeosaurus means hunt, running lizard. It lived about 76 to 74 million years ago in the Cretaceous period and it was found in North America it ate small dinosaurs, lizards and turtles, and it grew up to two metres long. Dromaeosaurus was a clever bird-like dinosaur, a fierce predator with deadly curved claws on its feet, powerful jaws, strong teeth and a bone-crunching bite. About the size of a wolf, Dromaeosaurus may also have hunted in packs, just as wolves do today. This would have helped it to catch and kill animals bigger than itself. One of the fastest running dinosaurs, Dromaeosaurus, had long back black legs, rather, and relied on speed to catch to grip to catch its prey. It probably used its huge toe claws to grip its unlucky prey and its powerful jaws to deliver a killing bite. Its long fingers would have been used for catching and holding thrashing victims. The large robust teeth of Dromaeosaurus were used for crushing and tearing its food rather than for slicing through flesh. Dromaeosaurus had a very stiff tail which it held straight in an upright position to balance the weight of its body. The tail was flexible near the body but covered in a lattice of bony rods further up to keep it straight. With a massive skull and solid jaws, Dromaeosaurus had a bite three times more powerful than that of a Velociraptor. The Big Bite Award goes to Dromaeosaurus. Dromaeosaurus was related to other dinosaurs that had big curved claws on their feet and teeth like daggers, including Velociraptor. It was named Running Lizard because it was a very speedy runner. It could run as fast as a modern day coyote. Dromaeosaurus had a large brain for its size that for some time scientists thought it had a much bigger body. It held its big toe claws off the ground when it was walking or running. This helped to stop them wearing down and kept them razor sharp. Big eyes and ex excellent vision helped Dromaeosaurus to hunt its prey and watch out for predators. The scary hunter probably also had a good sense of smell and hearing. A mouthful of saw-edged teeth pointing backwards helped Dromaeosaurus to rip flesh 
off the bones of its prey. Relatives of Dromaeosaurus had feathers, so it is likely that Dromaeosaurus was also a feathered dinosaur, although no evidence of feathers has been found on its fossils so far. So we've learnt some facts about Dromaeosaurus, and as dinosaur illustrators, what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate all those facts to have the best guess at drawing what this wonderful creature might have looked like. So what do we know about it? Let's make a list. We know that it's got a big big claw toe, toe claw rather, that it kept raised off the ground so that it didn't get worn down by the ground while it was running. We know that it's got sharp teeth. We know that it, relatives of Dromaeosaurus had feathers, so it is very likely that it was also a feathered dinosaur, although no evidence of feathers has been found on its fossils so far. So, we can draw feathers on it, we can make up the colours of the feathers because colour is very rarely preserved in fossils. And we can have a good idea about how its body looked. So, if you've got your coloured pencils and a piece of paper ready, let's get to the drawing part. OK, so let's get drawing our Dromaeosaurus. So first of all, let's talk about what, what tools I'm using here. <coughs> Um, got your colour pencils. As you can see, I've got quite a rainbow of colour pencils here. But don't worry if you haven't got this many colours. Um, because, as I said, we don't really know what colour the dinosaurs were. Not Certainly not their feathers. So that actually gives the illustrator an awful lot of freedom to do whatever colours you like to, when you're drawing them. Um, I've opted for some nice blues, um, some sort of greens and uh, uh, some opposing colours on the opposite sides of what's called the colour wheel. So some warmer colours for the highlights, some reds, browns, oranges. And for the lines and the details, I think I might be using a bit of purple, a bit of black, maybe some browns and some greys as well. I've got a couple of grey pencils. I've also got a rubber, an eraser, and a pencil sharpener. Now... Pencil sharpener, pretty self-explanatory. These might break while I'm, while, I'm, while I'm drawing it. The eraser, that's more for rubbing out sketching lines, which I use with a normal graphite sketching pencil. Now, you can't usually erase colour pencil lines very easily, but you can erase graphite pencil lines. So what I do for uh, what's called the underdrawing the initial sketch that you do when you're starting out your drawing is I use a graphite pencil. Um, and it's, it's hopefully we won't have to use the eraser too much, but um, it allows you to get a, a rough idea of what you want to draw before you start colouring in. OK, so when you're drawing, usually you just, you just draw in shapes. You, you, it's a way of training yourself to think in shapes. So... For the Dromaeosaurus, we know he was a sort of a, a running type uh, dinosaur with quite a lean body. Um, looked a bit like a, velo a velociraptor, really. So I'm going to start with the body shape, which is kind of this attenuated egg sort of thing. And then we, we know that there's a curly tail going out the back that he used, or she used, for balance. Now... I'm going to do a sort of slightly bushy end to that tail. So what you're doing is you've got a, a sort of a sausage shape coming out here, but it, it blooms into a slightly larger shape towards the end there. Now, um, I'm going to have its neck curling up, almost sort of off the end of the egg shape that we've already made. Now, don't as this is just a... A pencil sketch and underdrawing. Don't don't worry if it's very rough, or you you can make you can sort of feel your way around the shape of the animal just by sort of drawing these lots of little lines. Most artists aren't very confident about the shapes that they're making in the in the initial stages of their drawing, so they make lots of light lines. The lighter they are, the easier they are to rub out, you might not even have to rub them out if they're light enough. Um, 
So what I'm doing, so I've done the neck up there, now I'm doing a sort of another, a, another kind of egg type sh shape, except it's sort of a bent egg. And then another tube sort of shape down here for the leg. Remembering that dinosaurs bat legs, a lot of them, they're basically like chickens or birds. And they went in this kind of L shape, dog leg shape almost, um, going backwards and then forwards again. And then at the bottom, I've got this sort of a shape there, another, sh another couple of sausages for the feet. Remember we learned that the Dromaeosaurus keeps its big, big claw raised off the ground. So we're raising that one up there. Then these the two claws on the end of these toes need to be a bit smaller. Now behind it, obviously, we need to draw its other leg. So if you can imagine behind its tummy, there's another leg shape coming there. We don't need to draw this bit because that's behind on the other side of the Dromaeosaurus. Okay, and then we just do exactly what we did on that side. Let's start with the two the two lumps there. But of course, this time, the big claw is on the inside. So on this side, inside of its other leg. And you do the other two smaller claws. And now we're getting somewhere. Now it had long arms, not very long, but longer than the T-Rex at the front here. And I think three, three claws at the front. One, two, three. So just these swooping curling shapes. Let's have another, let's call that another kind of bendy egg shape there. Don't really know what to call that other than a bendy egg. Um, and then one, two, three more lines there and a few more claws. And then just disappearing behind its chest, the, the, the uh, other part of its arm. Now we're gonna turn those into feathers later, but those shapes give us the broad kind of shape of how the feathers will splay out. Now, let's go on to its head. So up here, we've got uh, what, how to describe this one? Sort of like a, a sort of pebble shape, really, up there. I'm gonna have him looking over his shoulder. And then, just so that we know what's see-through and what isn't, I'm going to rub out the top of that, that neck bit. Now we're getting somewhere. I might also rub out these bits. Let's check, you can. Rub out that bit that's inside the leg there. Uh, rub out that bit and rub out this bit that's joining the tail onto the body. Now I'm gonna smooth that curve there. And I like doing two circles so that you can see both eyes. You have to be a bit careful with that when you're drawing dinosaurs because some of them had eyes which were very much on the side of their heads. But here we go. And then a little line up here for the mouth. I'm gonna draw him looking happy today. And remember those backward facing sharp teeth inside the mouth. Right, okay, now we're starting to be able to do our colours. So, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna focus on blues, turquoises for this dinosaur. I'm gonna lighten up some of these lines, these underdrawing lines that I've done, so that they don't show through the final drawing too much. Oh, nearly lost in there. Keep him in the camera. Um, okay, now. For the base base colour of base covering of colour, 
what I do is I hold my pencil sort of on its side and do these sort of, use the flat side of the pencil. I've chosen the wrong colour there actually. I should be using a, more, a lighter blue. Um, so you hold the pencil sort of on its side and then you it allows you to give a much softer line, so you're not drawing definite lines yet. We're basically just colouring, colouring in. I'm going to do this all the way down, all the way over the dinosaur's body. And that gives you a basic, almost like a wash of colour. I'm not going to do the very end there. I think we'll, we'll have some more green in his arms. Do the tummy. I think I will do the thigh or the chicken leg as you might call it. Now I've done a, done a light blue there. Now I'm going to make, it's not quite turquoise enough as I want it. So I'm going to come in with some, this is a sort of a turquoisey green. And let's go over lightly again over the whole dinosaur. Just the bits that we've already done. I might sharpen this pencil actually because it's not it's not really as sharp as I'd like it. Right, it's okay. And I'm going to just make the forearm, foreleg rather, whatever you want to call it. I'll just do that just green, turquoise green. And the end of this tail, do that just green as well. Okay, so now we've done that soft layer of colour, we'll do a soft layer of light brown for the head. Not doing the eyes or mouth, just so you, you avoid those bits. Keeping the pencil on its side. It's trying to stay within the lines that you've sketched out. And then do the hands. If you can call them hands. And the legs. I think we can safely call these legs. Not colouring in the claws yet. I think we'll probably... do the claws black, but leave them uncoloured for a moment. Uh, just maybe another type of green on the bits that I want to be green, so... Now I'm getting a bit bolder with the pressure that I'm putting on the pencil. Making it lighter as I as I go up the arm. I'm going to the end of the tail here. Quite quite heavy pressure on the end of the tail and then getting lighter as I go in. Now let's do a bit of let's make the body a bit more blue. Not been quite bold enough with the blue that I want in here. And as you, um, the thing about drawing is that people don't really talk about that much. Is it's a bit like sculpting. You're sort of feeling your way around the shape of the of what what the three-dimensional animal would be like. So, so what I'm doing here is I'm always sort of sculpting its, its form as I'm, as I'm doing this. Right, now at this point, I'm gonna start thinking about where the light is coming from. So let's say the light is coming from up here, going, going in this direction down. So that means the shadows would, have been, would be cast on this side of the dinosaur. 
So I'm going to do some, I'll, I'll select a purple actually, a sort of light mauvey purple. Because the colours of shadows sort of change. And then, so I'll do under, under its chin there, there, there would be some shadow cast. Behind its leg here, maybe on the back of its thigh, and on the underside of its tail. Now it's not looking very feathery yet because we're going to do the feathers slightly later on. And I'm gonna, you know, the shadow would be cast under its tummy here. Maybe at the bottom of its thigh there, and behind its arm. And we'd also have some shadow cast on its feet and the underside of its jaw. So a darker brown now, just, just under the bottom of the jaw there. Most of this leg would be cast in shadow up to a point, and then slightly under the bottom of the foot. Same on the other side, but not so much shadow because the bottom of the tummy is not casting that much shadow on it. And on that side of the hand and on that side of the hand. Okay, now we're ready to start adding some details. So I quite like the idea of putting a red crest on the top of this one. So I'm going to, I don't think there's any red crests in the fossil record, but that's why we can have a bit of fun and take some artistic license. So just some sort of sausage-like lumps up there. A bit like a chicken. And you know, they were related to chickens. Modern chickens evolved from dinosaurs, as anybody that's seen Jurassic Park knows. So we can look to the chicken to when we're taking our artistic, artistic license with the details. Now I'm doing a bit of red around the eyes. My father-in-law keeps chickens and they sometimes have a bit of red around their eyes, so I'm gonna do that. I think I might, I didn't do this in the book, but I might give him some lipstick. Just cause I think it looks nice. <laughs> and, um, okay, so I think that's, that's okay for the orangey red. Um, let's get a dark brown colour now and start doing some details. So I'm going to outline. So with, when I'm doing my lines, I often do them in colour. So I'm going to get the dark brown and I've done around the crest. I'm going to do some details on its skin all around here. Um, and I'm gonna do some lines for its fingers, going over those pencil lines that we made earlier. One, two, three. Um, just tracing up the back of its leg here, up the back of its leg there. Now, being careful about the about the uh, orientation of the toes. Just gonna go over those, those lines that we had describing the big toe that it keeps off the ground. A Little bit more wrinkles, because they had quite wrinkly legs. If you think of a chicken's leg, they're quite wrinkly. So I imagine they had quite wrinkly legs like this. Put some wrinkles on these toes here go over those lines that we made in the sketch for the toes. And now I'm gonna go over the top of the nose. Just gently making those lines underneath the chin. Just like that. And now I think we can start on the feathers. Now get yourself a dark 
green if you can or whatever you've got to hand. Like I say, it doesn't matter if you haven't got these exact colors. And we're gonna do the top, just a curving line going down there for the arm. And then um, we'll do some feathers along the back, shall we? So starting at the top of its back, you're just doing these bumpy lines just to suggest feathers, just like that. Don't need to do it in a continuous lot of feathers, break them up. What you're doing, this is a sort of fairly cartoony style where you're just suggesting things and that really will do. So we're doing longer feather sort of shapes, just following the shape of its body on the tail and then at the top of the tail now. now it's nice to have a variety of colors when, you, when, I, when you're doing details. That's what I, lo I like to do as well. So gonna have those sort of going up its neck. Um, do some on the back of the leg here. Um, some on the arm. It's a bit random how I draw. I'm not very methodical about things, just however it looks at the time. Whatever looks nice, whatever works basically. Puts on there. Now I'm gonna get a purple, I think, and do some, do some more of the feather lines. Now, what we're gonna do is lots of feathers curving round this, the front of its neck here. So start up here and sort of follow the shape as if the feathers were fanning out away from its body going down. Now it's starting to take a bit of shape, isn't it? And I'm gonna put some more feathers facing us on this side. Now the same, do you remember we did this sketch line for the chicken leg. So do the same here with the feathers sort of fanning out like that. There we go. Okay. And again, around here, let's do some of these Have them fanning up the top here. And of course, the tummy. Now for a bit of excitement, I think I'll put some red feathers in. Just, just to add a little bit of drama. Doesn't mean that there's red feathers actually in this animal. Maybe some, how about some pink ones? Should we put some pink ones in? That seems like a good idea. Do I actually have a pink? I must have a pink somewhere. Here's a pink. Okay. Let's put some, so I think you need some quite a bit bigger feathers down here. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now let's start adding the final details. Get a back black pencil, make sure it's pretty fairly sharp. And then let's do the eyes. In the center of the eyes there. Now to make him look extra dramatic, I think I'll go around his eyes again. Now, should we, I imagine, because dentists, doc, dinosaurs didn't have very good dentists, the teeth probably would have been a bit yellow. So let's just fill in those teeth a bit there. 
and maybe they would have been a bit brown as well. We don't want to over accentuate the teeth too much because that will be a bit distracting. But I'm out going over the outlines of those teeth with a light brown there. And maybe a bit more a bit more tone on the face here, I think. Let's strengthen that up a bit and the skin elsewhere the non-feathery bits. Now let's get the black, go back to the black and oh I think I'll do some crusty lip wrinkles. Oh and of course he had two little dots for to breathe out of at the end of his nose. Maybe a few wrinkles at the end of his beak. Um, few smaller feathers up there. Just some little dark highlight feathers just to mix it up a bit. But often when you look at feathered animals what you think is actually one colour is actually lots of different colours. So you're trying to give that effect of lots of different colours shimmering at you at once. So now I'm highlighting, delineating the lines on its, on its uh, claws. A few more wrinkles on the claws here. And then the claws again. Don't forget to make those claws really quite big, the ones it held off, held off the ground. A lot like a velociraptor. Now the trickiest bit with these animals is getting the order of the toes and feet right. So this toe is coming in front of us here, in, 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 in front of its foot as we're looking at it here. Whereas this toe is behind this toe. There's no real easy way to describe how to do that. You've just got to keep your wits about you when you're drawing dinosaur toes, especially if they're related to velociraptors. And especially if you are drawing a factual dinosaur book. <laughs> okay, so now it looks a little bit like he's floating in midair. So I always like to draw a bit of Let's go back to our side side on pencil light drawing technique here. Just make a little bit of ground. Uh, let's get a darker brown again. Put a few rocks in, pebbles. Maybe a bit of a grey, not use much grey even though I've got my greys to hand. Uh, where are they? My shadows are always slightly stronger directly underneath things, so let's just intensify the shading just under the feet here. Maybe drag it back a bit. Forward a bit as well. And of course we need a few little bits of green just to finish off sprouting up randomly because everybody knows that there were no gardeners in the Cretaceous period. If there were, they were very, very lazy. And they never did the weeding. Let's have a little fern. And that, oh, let's, I think, just before I leave you, I'll get some feathers on there. And he's looking a little bit bald up here, on the, just above his eyes. So I think we'll um, maybe add a, add a bit of artistic license. A sort of ridge above the, above the eyes. The editor might have got back to me saying there was no 
ridge above the eyes, so don't take my word for it in terms of Dromaeosaurus's forehead. But there we have it, a drawing of a Dromaeosaurus. And uh, it's I, I, today I've drawn it in pencil. Um, I actually used an iPad in the book, so it probably looks a little bit different. But the, the technique is all entirely the same, just using the same sort of things, just with digital tools. But I thought it's a bit more fun to actually show you it drawn on a real piece of paper. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. And uh, that's Dromaeosaurus. That's how you draw a Dromaeosaurus. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that you are now beginning your career in dinosaur illustration. It's a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun illustrating this book and I hope you have a lot of fun reading it as well. There's loads more dinosaurs where they came from in this book and you learn an awful lot as I did. So have fun, keep drawing dinosaurs and I hope you enjoy our book. Thank you.